pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the City Council meeting. Let the record show that all members of the City Council are present this evening. A copy of the Open Meetings Act is posted in the meeting room and is accessible to members of the public at any time during the course of this meeting. First item on the agenda is my pleasure to recognize one of those individuals who has put to, towards uh, our community an awful lot of effort. Uh, Linda Grell, I'm going to ask you to come front and center if you would have a chair, please. I'm going to um, read just a few things about you and what you did in the last 40 years <coughs> as being representative of Keep Beatrice Beautiful. She started this position in 1982 and was, uh, I think, at that time, the editor of the Beatrice Daily Sun uh, kind of encouraged you to be a part of this uh, group of folks. It was uh, at that time named the Beatrice Clean City. Later the name changed to Keep Beatrice Beautiful. You accepted the position at that time and since then the program has won seven Keep America Beautiful National Awards, the President's Gold Cup Award twice, and has had the opportunity to receive many Beatrice City grants. These grants have purchased recycled content benches, restored the tabernacle at Chautauqua Park, repainted the Beatrice City Auditorium and purchased drapes, uh, built park shelters and planted over 300 trees in city parks and along Chief Standing Bear Trail. In August of 2005, KBB was one of 47 groups nationwide to receive the National Award for the Kodak American Greenways Award Program in Arlington, Virginia also received several grants for park benches along the city hike and bike trail. Linda served three year, a three-year term on the first Keep America Beautiful Coordinators Advisory Committee, representing a five-state area of Keep America Beautiful affiliates. She received the Keep America Beautiful Professional Leadership Award and served on the uh, Keep America Beautiful National Conference Re Regional Planning Committee. Got a plaque for you, Linda. I'll bring it down, present it to you. Congratulations on 40 years. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll share this. I forgot half of that, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> plaque reads, service recognition presented to Linda Grell in appreciation of her partnership with the city of Beatrice. 40 years of service at Keep Beatrice Beautiful Incorporated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank no, I just have all these notes, but he covered it all. Oh. So. <laughs> I just want to thank you and thank the city of Beatrice uh, for having us always in the auditorium, free rant, and so that was gracious of them. And uh, it's just been a great 40 years. I've enjoyed every minute of it, meeting lots of people, and it's nice to do things for your community that make it look better, So, and that's what all of you do too. So thank you for all your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Linda. Thanks for bringing Mayor Ellen Grell with you. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is a proclamation regarding Arbor Day. The proclamation reads as follows. Whereas in 19, or, beg your pardon, whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture <coughs> that a special day be set aside for planting of trees. And whereas the holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. And whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable source giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. 
And whereas trees in our city increase property taxes, enhance the economic viability of business areas and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Now therefore I stand worth, Mayor of the City of Beatrice, do hereby proclaim April 29th, 2022 as Arbor Day in the City of Beatrice. And I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. And furthermore, I urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. Witness my hand on official seal of the City of Beatrice, Nebraska, this 18th day of April, 2022. And a really nice segue to all of this is that I just received a communication from Don Lambie, Arbor Day Foundation Chief Executive, uh, recognizing Beatrice again and congratulating us on earning the recognition as Tree City USA. So that just came in the mail today and I thought I'd pass that on to everybody. And um, Jerry Busey, who is coordinator for, the new coordinator for Keep Beatrice Beautiful, I'm gonna present this proclamation to you. We're going to do a tree planting on Arbor Day next uh, a week from Friday. Invite everybody here to attend. Uh, we're going to have about 70 uh, <coughs> elementary school kids there that day. Uh, and uh, Mark Pithos is uh, helping strange that to plant a tree at the trailhead of a Chief Standing Bear at 9.30 on the 29th. So you're welcome to come down and participate. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. <coughs> All right, we will proceed with the agenda. First item on the agenda, actually all items under the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless the citizen so requests. <coughs> Beg your pardon, the councilman so requests. First item is approve agenda as submitted. B, receive and place on file all notices pertaining to this meeting. C, receive and place on file all materials having any bearing on this meeting. D, approval of minutes of regular meeting on April 4th, 2022, as on file in the city clerk's office. E, approval of treasurer's report of claims in the amount of $510,902.11. F, approval of Boswell report of claims in the amount of $78,650.88. <coughs> G, approval of ambulance, uh, write-off ambulance bad debts. H, refer claim of Unite private networks regarding damages to their personal property to the city attorney and city insurance carrier for review and disposition. I refer, uh, refer claim of Bridget Jurgens regarding damages to her personal property to the city attorney and city insurance carrier for review and disposition. J, resolution number 6874, entering into an interlocal cooperation <coughs> uh, act agreement for the purpose of Nebraska Mutual Finance Assistance Act. K, resolution number 6875, granting permission to Main Street Beatrice and their designees, permission to serve alcoholic beverages and to sell or offer for sale or peddle goods, wares or merchandise upon city property located in the city auditorium on Saturday, May 21st, 2022 from two to 7 p.m. as a backup location for their Taste of Spring fundraiser. <coughs> Is there any item, any member of the council once removed from the consent agenda? All right, gentlemen, uh, Mr. McLean. I move that the items listed under the consent agenda be approved, accepted, and or ratified as presented. Second. Moved by McLean, seconded by Morgan, that all items listed under the consent agenda be approved, and your vote, please. And that is approved. Fairbanks, Mr. Fairbanks. I'm sorry. That's all right. That is approved, 8-0. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing on the acquisition of real property from John P. Chudy, described as follows. Lot 2, Block 63, Original Town, now City of Beatrice, Gage County, Nebraska, commonly referred to as 
517 to 519 Court Street, Gage County Parcel ID number 0098530000. So we, took, we call it the 517, 519 Court Street building, but everybody knows it's the J.C. Penney's building. Uh, that's the way it's commonly referred to. Uh, the city had the opportunity to purchase this property. Uh, the contract before you tonight is for $12,000, uh, plus an additional about $2,000 and some taxes to be paid, uh, get those cleared up, some real estate taxes. Uh, I think our per plan with the building at this point is just to secure it and hopefully uh, make it weather tight and make it ready for redevelopment for somebody to come in and, and hopefully put a new business in there. So. Uh, after this, I think closing would be sometime in the middle of May by the time you got through the remonstrance period and some of those things is probably the time you'd be looking at closing. Questions, gentlemen? From the audience. Okay. Entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I move the public hearing be closed at 7.10 p.m. Second. Moved by McLean, seconded by Billsbach, that the public hearing be closed at 7.10 p.m. Your vote, please. That is approved 8-0. Next is a resolution number 6876, executing the contract of sale of real estate and all necessary documents to acquire real estate from John P. Chudy. I move that resolution number 6876 be passed and adopted. Second. <clears throat> Moved by McLean, seconded by Kerr, that resolution 6876 be passed and adopted. Any further discussion needed, gentlemen? Any, anyone from the audience? All right, your vote, please. That is approved 8-0. Resolution 6876 has been adopted. Next is resolution number 6877, appointing John Hickman as Beatrice's new chief of police. I move that resolution number 6877 be passed and adopted. Second. Moved by McLean, seconded by Morgan, that resolution 6877 be passed and adopted. Tobias, you want to give just a little bit of an overview? Sure. Uh, so we ended up with about 15 applications for the uh, new police chief um, job that we had open out there uh, from across the country. Uh, we narrowed that down. We had three sets of interviews um, for the first round. We had a group of community uh, individuals. We had the Civil Service Commission, and then we had a group of former police chiefs that also did an interview. Uh, from there, we kind of narrowed that list down, civil service. We had to go through that process. They then have three names that they certify. Uh, from there, we brought uh, uh, John uh, Russell or Hickman, so John Hickman back in for uh, an interview uh, with the mayor and a couple other individuals, and that's who we're recommending tonight uh, to be appointed as the new police chief. He is from Glendive, Montana. Uh, he also was a police officer back in North Carolina, uh, previous to his experience out in Montana. He has a master's degree in criminal justice. He has a master's degree in public administration. He also has experience running a 911 communications center. So uh, what we would do is look to bring um, Mr. Hickman in sometime in May and have him get started. And uh, if you guys all know, Chief Lang's last day is June 3rd. He's not here. Chief Lang? No. Does not Hickman. He's I beg your pardon? He's not here. He's not here, no. He, he has a job. It's in a Montana. tough, co tough <laughs> commute. <laughs> Gary. Well, what are we going to start his salary at? 87,000 86, or 86. 86. Okay. Thank you. Yep. I just comment. I got to sit in on that last interview. Um, very, in, very impressive young in, individual. I believe he's about 40 years old. That took some hard questions. Did a very, very good job. Very impressive. So. Anyone else? Anyone from the audience? All right. And your vote, please. And that is approved 8-0. Resolution. Uh, 6877 has been passed and adopted. He will be introduced uh, before the city council uh, once he is uh, coming, uh, getting closer to taking over the position and uh, uh, you'll have an opportunity to uh, visit with him at that time too. Next is resolution 6878, executing the first amendment to the marketing services agreement between the city and Omaha Public Power District to amend the contract term, add additional services, and increase the service fee as recommended by the Board of Public Works. I move the resolution number 6878 be passed and adopted. Second. Moved by McLean, seconded by Billsbach that resolution 6878 be passed and adopted. 
Tobias. Uh, as you guys know, we have part of the Cottonwood Wind Farm out around the Hastings area. As part of that contract, we need somebody to help manage that <coughs> asset that we have. We've been using Tenasca for the last about four years. Uh, we're switching to OPPD. That initial contract with Tenasca, um, we thought it was over in April. It runs through May 1st. And so this contract changes that date to still have OPPD start May 1st. There's also some additional forecasting services that, in, or that Tenasca was providing. Um, that were not included in the OPPD contract. We made sure we picked those up as well. And so that's the other portion of this amendment that you see. Savings is about 70000 a year? Correct. Can you explain to them what the forecasting services are? So it is forecasting the amount of wind, and it's the amount, and not only that, but when the wind will start and how much it will produce for energy and when they think it will drop off. And uh, all that stuff gets bid into the day ahead market, so it's very important that you know that, and you know that very well. Um, so, yes, that's what the forecasting portion of it is. Any other questions, gentlemen? Anyone from the audience? All right, your vote, please. And that is approved 8-0. Resolution 6878 has been passed and adopted. Next is Resolution 6879, entering into an agreement for purchase and sale of renewable energy certificates between the city and ACT Commodities Incorporated as recommended by the Board of Public Works. I move the resolution number 6879 be passed and adopted. Second. Moved by McLean, seconded by Morgan, that resolution 6879 be passed and adopted. As part of the Cottonwood Wind Project, you receive renewable energy certificates. Uh, you do that for any type of green product or green energy that's out there. With those certificates, then you can buy, sell, and trade them to other corporations or individuals who are looking to acquire those. Usually it's corporations <coughs> who want to acquire them so they can use that to offset their energy needs and show that they're using green power. Uh, so what we have here is an agreement with ACT Commodities. <coughs> they would purchase our 2021 RECs in return. Uh, we receive payment. And then we'll look forward to, we just continue to bank them every month as we receive them. It ba it's based upon the number of megawatt hours that the wind farm generates. We just put those into an account and we wait until we have enough to make it worthwhile of selling them. So how much are they paying for certificates? About $150,000. Yep. Questions, gentlemen? Anyone from the audience? All right, your vote please. And that is approved 8-0. Resolution 6879 has been passed and adopted. Next is an ordinance to convey real estate owned by, uh, by the city to Kurt Hagerman. I move that said ordinance be given the number 22-8, the title thereof be approved, the rules <coughs> be suspended, and the ordinance been read by number only three times tonight. Second. Moved by McLean, seconded by Kerr, that the ordinance be given number 22-8. The title thereof approved, the rules suspended, and the ordinance be read by number three times tonight. Motion to suspend the rules is not debatable. Your vote, please. That is approved, 8-0. Ordinance number 22-8 by number the first time. Ordinance number 22-8 by number the second time. And ordinance number 22-8 by number the third and final time. I move that ordinance number 22-8 be passed and approved. Second. Moved by McLean, seconded by Morgan, that ordinance number 22-8 be passed and approved. So we're looking at the lot at Bismarck and Weeby, 631 Bismarck, it's on the west side of the Beatrice. Uh, we acquired this lot about a year ago. There was a dilapidated house that was on it. The city has had that house demolished and removed at our cost. Uh, we had an individual come to us, Mr. Hagerman, who is interested in acquiring that lot. And so we set the purchase price at $10,000. He pays $2,000 at closing. If he builds a single family residence on that lot before February 1st of 2023, the remaining $8,000 are waived. So he has an incentive then to go ahead and build uh, a house on there. Uh, we have some requirements in there as far as the size of house and that kind of stuff and what it means to be finished, all that's in the contract. Uh, again, as long as he does that, he'll print his purchase price will be $2,000 and we'll have an, another single family home, a new one in the community um, for somebody to move into. Uh, we did the same similar setup, if you remember, on 9th and Monroe Street with that lot and with Laverne Engelman on a couple of lots about two years ago uh, as well. <coughs> similar setups. And 1,500 square foot house. Yeah, it's a 1,500 square foot finished living space. Any other questions? Audience? And your vote, please. And that is approved 8-0. Ordinance number 22-8 has been passed and adopted. 
Next is a resolution, resolution number 6880, executing a contract of sale of real estate and all necessary documents to Kurt Hagerman. I move that resolution number 6880 be passed and adopted. Second. Moved by McLean, seconded by Kerr, that resolution 6880 be passed and adopted. Any further discussion needed? Gentlemen, anyone from the audience? And your vote, please. And that is approved 8-0. Resolution 6880 has been passed and adopted. Next is the public forum. Purpose of the public forum is for the presentation of an item by the general public to the city council for consideration at a later date. No discussion or action will be taken by the city council at this time. Anything for the public forum? Anyone? Anyone? All right, we'll go right into uh, discussions and reports. And first up is uh, Michael Sothen, director of Main Street. Michael, welcome. I know you guys have already received the report, but since it was probably <coughs> stuck in the packet or on, on the computer, thought this might be easier to give you a quick hand version as well. Thank you for letting me join you here today. Try to keep this um, short and leave time for some questions from you guys. Seems like it wasn't that long ago that I was up here, but man, time, time certainly flies. Um, so this report is for the second quarter of your fiscal year um, of 2021-2022. Here in this report, um, we'll have the, the summary that's at the beginning, just to kind of lay it out real quick. Snapshot, just a quick image of where we have been over this last quarter. And then the two pages facing each other are kind of our focus areas that we had talked about when we had developed this agreement with you guys. And so that kind of gives you a quick layout of things. With this quarter, obviously starting in, with the month of January, has been a pretty fast paced one. We've had some really good things happening. We've also definitely had some challenges. The main challenge that I think you guys are all aware of that's new to this quarter was the development with the Kensington. Um, that was something that was certainly unexpected. We had had a, a visit with the management team in the middle of January. And then all of a sudden at the very end of February, um, that, that visit with them in January went really good. They were talking about light at the end of the tunnel really excited about the future, and by the end of February, things had really changed. Um, so we've been working with them very regularly, been talking with the management team, probably on average about once a week since then. We've been talking right now with a little over, I think we're up to about 12 developers that we've talked to as of today. I was just trying to get some interest in that site. We've certainly had some good interest, um, continuing to, to try to work that. It's quite the building. There's over almost 50,000 square feet just above ground. So it's definitely not something that anyone's going to rush into, but hopefully we'll, we'll continue being able to work that. Uh, that's definitely been one of the big challenges. It seems like it's been even longer ago, but we've had things like 1011 here uh, with the Our Town series, worked with them to try to, to get several of those stories rolling. Um, I think I told you guys in, during our last report, we had Morgan Fox join our team. So that's really helped to start propelling some of our efforts forward, still trying to, to gain that capacity. And she's been with us now for a little over 90 days. And so still a little bit of a learning curve, but, but we've been making some good progress. Something that the community certainly enjoys is our Chocolate Lovers event. It was really nice to be able to have that back in a relatively normal capacity now that the pandemic is starting to let up a little bit. We had nearly 200 people come and attend that event. We had 27 downtown businesses that were participating with that. I'm really excited that, um, that we've been seeing some good results for the business community and just seeing growth in the types of businesses that attract people to these types of events. There's no doubt we've been working a lot with the city of Beatrice on our grant programs um, that, that the city was able to apply for. It's leveraging about $400,000 into the hands of private property owners. I, I believe that you guys have probably seen a report that the committee is recommending 13 of a little over 50 projects be moved on through the process and, and eventually towards some level of funding. Tried to spread those funds out as far as possible. So that was great to be able to work with the city on that and continuing to work through all the regulations of that program. Another big thing that you guys have seen in the news has been working with the UNL classes. We've, uh, we had two different groups that joined us. One that was an undergraduate architecture group 
pretty light involvement here in the community. And then we've got a graduate group of students that are working on a new downtown revitalization plan. A lot of the aspects in that plan that they presented to the community aren't necessarily new concepts, but maybe are in a few different ways bringing some things back up. A few things that'll definitely challenge us. Some things that I think really match up fall into place pretty easily. So they will be presenting that final plan to you guys <laughs> I think they, they mentioned May 13th is the date that they plan to do that. We've certainly been trying to get out there and work with a lot of our businesses and property owners. It's just as I presented last quarter, right now our main effort has really still been a lot with our property owners just because of some of the issues that we've been working through there. But certainly planning on continuing to, to get out, um, especially as Morgan gets her feet underneath her and we'll be doing a lot more visits with our, our business owners themselves. So. Hopefully that gives you guys uh, a lot of look at everything. There's certainly a lot more numbers and some information here in this report, but we won't go over everything. Do you guys have any questions for me? Anything that? Michael, I'm looking at, oh, excuse me. Go ahead, Tim. Michael, I'm looking at the marketing training for small businesses section and your entrepreneur development and retention. Because hmm? uh, it's one of the areas that you said we were going to focus on with the, uh, the financial assistance that you guys received. And I just want to know, you know, we're in April, where are we, besides the numbers that are listed here, yep. how many businesses of these 60 of the anticipated have you been to? So, so great, great question. And, and um, one of the things, especially on the marketing side, since we just got our marketing coordinator, who was just hired in the middle of January, you know, certainly, um, I guess it's, it's fair to definitely say that we're maybe not, numbers wise, aren't, aren't fully on, on track as far as evenly. I definitely do have confidence that we will be making it out, especially with some nicer months. Being able to get out and face-to-face, -face, we will be spending a lot of time working with our, our business owners uh, to, try to try to help with that. And so, <coughs> yes, as far as how many of the businesses have we actually directly met with, as far as part of the, the marketing or some of the entrepreneur development portion, we're right now, and I don't have the, the exact numbers right here in front of me, we're probably about a third, maybe a little bit less than that, but right around that, I think we're gonna catch up a lot of ground. We've already had, uh, as far as personal visits with property owners, which is on a different section, that's really where we've had a lot more energy that's been put. I think we're way ahead of schedule in that regard. Just between the, the grant working with property owners and just other property owners in general, we've already logged well over 150 phone calls. We've had um, several dozen face-to-face -face meetings right now. And so that's definitely an area that, that I think we're ahead of schedule, but I will admit that we're a little behind schedule, especially on the marketing side of things. Well, with getting Megan, Morgan, whatever. Morgan, yep. Morgan a little bit later in the deal is understandable. So I just wanna make sure that you guys continue to make that a focus because that was one of the priorities that was set. It, it certainly hasn't yeah. gone away as a focus right. for us, just trying to build that capacity to better, better launch into that. All right, thank you. Thank you, Tim. Michael, you had mentioned the Kensington, and I want to thank you for all the extra work that you have done, taking all the phone calls that you've taken and showing the building numerous, numerous times and everything. So thanks for all the work that you've done on that because they haven't really taken the bull by the horns yet. So um, you've, they've had to do a lot of that remotely from, from what I understand. Yeah. It you know, it was definitely an unexpected thing. You know, it's, it's one of those things that, frankly, wasn't reflected in our plan with you guys, but it's the type of work that we want to be able to, to more fully embrace. And there's no doubt, we've, we've spent more hours on that than any other singular project probably at this point. And it, it dominates our downtown landscape. So I think it's important to a lot of residents in the community. I certainly hear that out there. I know it's important to you guys, and we're, we're hoping that we'll see that come through. We, we've been Definitely trying to uncover a lot of stones, getting names of people that may have interest. It's not a small project, as I mentioned earlier, and so it's going to take the right person, and um, we may have to be a little bit patient, but we've, we've seen some positive signs so far. Michael, Morgan, excuse me, Morgan came on in January, about 90 days now, I'm sorry, about 90 days now that she's been here. She come back to you and thought, and uh, she expressed the thing that this is really daunting, or is this what she thought it would be? Is that is the project a little more overwhelming? I mean, where is, since she's not here to ask, I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, great, great question. So, yeah, we, we did just do a, you know, a 90-day review here just this last week, and 
a lot of that, those questions kind of came up. I, I think she's, um, you know, the, the right candidate for the position. She's grabbed the, the bull by the horns. And there's definitely times where, you know, there are, there are a few aspects that are going to be a little bit challenging, you know, making sure that we are um, providing good, relevant information to our businesses is a little bit, at times, a little overwhelming, especially with the number of businesses that, that we want to be able to serve. Um, but the eagerness and, and just jumping right in to learn has, has certainly been there. Um, it's been great to have someone that wants to have a broad understanding of this community, of our downtown, of what businesses, what property owners need. Yes, she's got a, a more specific focus, but she's trying to make sure that she's understanding the broad scope to then be able to narrow back down, which I'm, I'm appreciative of. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Anyone from the audience? Michael, thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate the report. Next up is Engage quarterly <laughs> report. And Tracy Froscheiser, member of the Engage board, is with us tonight, along with a special guest. And uh, would you uh, bring your special guest with you? Sorry, I didn't bring handouts. This is my first time at one of these meetings and definitely my first time sitting here. So thank you and I appreciate you guys having me. I'm Tracy Froscheiser. I'm the secretary for Engage. Um, Trevor Lee did, uh, was our executive director and accepted a position in Kearney. He has left us. And um, I do have the privilege tonight of introducing our new executive director, Derek Dowell. He is coming to us from York. He is the development coordinator there. He will be starting next week, I believe. Two weeks, two weeks I lied, two weeks. Um, so we are very excited to have him um, come on board. Got a lot of great experience. Uh, a couple of the things that I'm gonna be talking about here in our quarterly report, he has a lot of really great experience uh, and some things that I think will be really key um, to bringing uh, to Beatrice. So very, very excited. Got already some um, maybe network connections already here too. So very, very nice to have maybe a built-in community and some friends here already. So I will let you talk a little bit about yourself if you want. <clears throat> yeah, so I come from, born and raised in York, Nebraska. Um, been in relationship building kind of my whole life, um, taking some uh, positions, you know, after school, uh, developing um, um, some growth in different uh, businesses, whether it was uh, working for Cornerstone Bank uh, or um, a larger nonprofit, kind of developing different groups with that. So relationship building is something I'm looking forward to uh, here in this community, learning more about uh, Beatrice and Gage County, uh, just getting to know the, all the different partners that exist within the community. So I'm very excited about that. Um, so I'm looking forward to you know getting here and uh, learning more about the place and uh, uh, kind of hit the ground running from there. So I look forward to working with all of you. Good to have you, Derek. Look forward to working with you. And when did, has he started, Tracy? In two weeks. Two weeks. May, May second. second. May second. Mr. Morgan? So did you work with Lisa Hurley? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I've, I've worked with her when I was with the college for a number of years. Yeah, she's been a phenomenal person to work with for the okay. last uh, four years, and so I've been very privileged to uh, be working underneath her, so yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any other questions for Derek? No? Okay. Well, um, I'll start in on our report here. Um, we did our member renewals here in quarter three. Um, our staff uh, did the investor renewals for 2022. We had 44 businesses that invested in Engage. That is in addition to um, Gage County, the city of Beatrice, and the villages of Adams and Cortland. We are also involved in the communities for kids. Uh, that is one of the areas that um, Derek is also very involved in in York. So he'll be bringing uh, a wealth of experience uh, and can dive right in, I think, um, with that. Um, but with our communities for kids, we have a contract, a budget, and a work plan that have already been approved by the Nebraska Children Families Foundation and our Engage board uh, with the feedback of the Beatrice Engage uh, com community core team. The child care landscape survey was developed 
and also has been promoted on the social media sites and Engage websites. We do have a flyer and I brought a few that I would like to leave if anybody would like um, some, <clears throat> if there's anybody in the crowd. We are offering, if you do want to leave your um, name and email at the end of it, $100 um, for a random chance to win a hundred dollars to some local grocery stores um, but we've also mailed over 8,500 of these surveys to local residents here in the area um, and then as an incentive Engage has used some member funds as a matching to the C4K grant that we received to give some of these participants a chance to win those gift cards to the local grocery stores. Uh, the survey will end in May and then the C4K team will analyze the findings and then they'll report back to our core team and uh, the Engage board. Uh, we did uh, secure the Swartzkopf uh, property in the Gage County Industrial Site at the end of court, uh, Q2. In Q3, Engage applied for and received a Section 128A Phase 1 ESA through the Nebraska Department of Environment and en Energy. We're going to use uh, member funds and engage complete <coughs> conceptual rail design to serve the site using the city and the BNSF right-of-way. Uh, and then as I mentioned, Trevor uh, Lee, our executive director, uh, did leave his post effective March 31st. Uh, to pursue an opportunity in Kearney, and um, he is going to be remaining on as an hourly employee to assist us if we have anything that needs to be done, if we have any kind of request for proposals during our transition period here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the executive committee, which consists of Andrea Schaefer as our president, Chad Lottman as the vice president, Dave Norton as a treasurer, myself as a secretary, uh, began the search for the next executive director. We had several potential candidates that we vetted throughout February and March. Uh, following several interviews, we engaged several uh, major um, uh, employers and um, the Engage board, and we uh, unanimously voted that we hire Derek, and um, we will be um, very excited to have him here in the next two weeks. So first day will be May 2nd. Any questions of Tracy? Uh, Tracy, also Aaron Chadwick's going to be helping uh, yes. some as an as needed basis. And Trevor will be available on Fridays and stuff. Yes, he will, uh, he will be coming back. And then Aaron Chadwick, if you all remember, um, she was the marketing coordinator under um, Walker and Trevor, and so she will be assisting as needed as well. Mm -hmm. So the office will be staffed as, yes. Correct. I had a question for Derek, if I could. Please. Um, Derek, is, you were just in Oklahoma, University of Oklahoma, at an economic development uh, class that you've been taking. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I was actually up in Pittsburgh. I was actually up at uh, in Pittsburgh for OU, um, Oklahoma's Economic Development Institute. Um, <clears throat> this is a program that economic developers go through uh, to get a better understanding of what it takes to be an economic developer um, with the, the goal to be um, <clears throat> properly educated to you, where you could work in a community of 5,000 or 500,000 um, so that way you kind of get the general knowledge and general understanding of what it takes to be an economic developer. Um, you, you take these classes, uh, you go through three different sessions. Uh, I completed my final session at Pittsburgh. Um, after you're completing your sessions, um, you have the opportunity to sit for a certified economic developer's test. It's kind of a practoral exam, similar to like a bar exam or something like that. Um, <clears throat> so come next March, uh, I'll have the opportunity to sit for that um, and, and take that. And so. Um, looking forward to that and uh, bringing that knowledge to uh, Gage County and the city of Beatrice to, to help further uh, the growth in the area. And within the year or so, you'll probably be have the highest credentials of any economic development director that we've had. So, very good. Yes. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes, Rich. You said Trevor's coming back on Fridays. 
the way his work. And he's going to be paid hourly, if, eight hours a day? If we need him is the only way that... How much is he getting paid an hour? I would have to look. I don't know off the top of okay. my head. Um, he, he is only getting paid if we need him. He doesn't come in and work on Fridays okay. just to work. All right, that, yes. that answered my question. Thank you. Yep. It's maybe more, more than anything to take care of some loose ends that maybe okay. uh, have been uh, in process. And um, uh, my guess is that we won't need him very long once Derek hits the ground running. I think right. it's mostly to get Derek up to speed after <clears throat> Derek gets here. And some of the things that are, about our, that are pending right now. Okay. Any other questions? Welcome. Thank Welcome you very much. much. Thanks, Thanks for taking it easy on me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. Same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Derek. See you in a couple of weeks. It gets harder yeah. from here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next is the 22 Annual Tax Increment Financing Report, which is required. Which, yeah, the state legislature makes us file two annual tax uh, increment financing reports. Uh, they're different, so they have different stuff we have to do. Uh, this one is due uh, in, in May. Uh, what it requires is that we send notification to all the taxing entities, so community college, the, the public schools, the uh, historical society, those types of things will all have a taxing authority. They, they get a copy of this agreement. Uh, basically, we have to report the number of active projects we have out there, which is 15. Uh, we have had no TIF projects get paid off last year. We had one new project come on the books in the last year. That would be the Hevlone Building, which is at 112, 114 North 6th Street. So uh, Rob Schaefer's law firm, that building is the new TIF project that came on. Uh, as of this report, we have 34.02% of our town uh, is blighted or substandard. Uh, we reported that last time uh, when we brought in the new area around Russ's Market. The outstanding projects that we have have a assessed valuation as of January 1st of $31,777,040. So just under $32 million is what we have assessed valuation that's on the TIF um, process. Our total city property valuation is about $740 million, just kind of a, a ballpark configuration of where it was at. Some of those projects that are outstanding are the hatchery, um, the new houses out in Covered Bridge Heights, the new houses that Excel Development put up around the old hospital site. Uh, you have the Hannibal View, if anybody's been out there lately and some of the houses that have gone up in that area, Xmark's expansion, uh, the Mercantile Building, which is the brewery downtown, um, the new uh, hotel, the My Place Hotel, that's one of those. So a number of different types of projects that are on there. Uh, the oldest project we have out there is Fakler's Professional Building on North 6th Street. That came on in 2012. If you figure 15 years is typically how long they last, so you're looking at 20, 27 before that one starts to roll off. And then once that one does, you have a number of them kind of that start rolling off after that. So, other questions anybody has out there? But yes, this, the legislature just says we have to report this to the city council. It doesn't say how to do it. so. This is how you do this it. This is how we're going to do it. The, 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 the year at the hot, old hospital site, mm -hmm. and I know we had talked about that before, they have plans for the remaining four lots? So there's four lots there. You have a new TIF project coming through right now that will take the two furthest to the east. Okay. They're looking to put uh, two duplexes on those, so one on duplex on each lot for senior family living, uh, similar to the ones that are already in that block. Uh, they will not be as income restricted as the ones that are already there. Okay. Uh, different taxing right. rules that they have. Um, but those two are rolling through. The other two lots will remain vacant at this point. Um, they'll continue to look to find ways to develop those. Okay. Any other questions, gentlemen? From the audience. All right. Final report is the city administrator's monthly report. Tobias? Yeah, just kept to update you on a few things. Uh, we got notification this last week that we did not receive the grant from Land Water Conservation Fund for the Astro Park Playground. Uh, we receive about every other grant when we apply for that one. So we receive it one year, we don't receive it the next year. Um, that's when we'll have to sit back and look. That playground's $120,000. Uh, so if we're gonna try to, to rebuild that, we've gotta come up with some funding there. The other one we did not receive was the RTP grant, which is for a trail extension uh, from 24th to 26th Street along Highway 136 there, so out by uh, Crandall's office, 
that area of town. We're trying to extend that, that trail segment that kind of ends there at Gleason's Dental and doesn't come back into, uh, hit a sidewalk. We're looking to extend that one. I believe that budgeted about $110,000. And so that's one we'll obviously, we do have those CBG revolving loan funds. We've got a couple other projects we're trying to clean up with those, but that may be where we look to spend some of those additional dollars that are remaining <coughs> on that particular project there. Uh, again, idea is that we have a bunch of kids who walk that and today they walk out in the street, uh, which is a highway. And so if we can find a way to get them off of that and onto a trail, it would probably be safer. The bridge rails on South 6th Street, we got notification. We've got the permit from the state, so that's been approved. Uh, we've got them being manufactured right now. And so manufacturing is supposed to be completed July 27th. And then uh, Jason Moore and the street department will look to do insulation this fall. So that's kind of the time frame we're on at this point. And then lastly, I don't know if you read through uh, the information or not, but I certainly want to congratulate our five teams that are going through the weight loss challenge. Uh, they've lost a combined total of 254 pounds so far. So very good job. Big person. Yeah. Doing a good job. A little person. <laughs> <laughs> the, Everything's uh, relevant, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. The Chief Standing Bear Trail restroom <laughs> and parking lot really. Uh, it does. That, that really <coughs> nice. They <coughs> added the lights it, now. Yeah, yep. lights are in there. Uh, landscaping is next. I, I believe Mark's getting, I think Mark left. I think we're getting bids on... Uh, some landscaping down there, and then we're also working on some grant opportunities to have a stormwater detention cell in that location <coughs> that will also have be landscaped, and so uh, kind of show people what can be done as far as stormwater post and uh, pre and post uh, runoff. So now we just need to improve the further south, the, the, you know, south of project south. Get a hundred foot <laughs> curtain <coughs> from a dumpster. <laughs> working on it, Toby. It's a work in process. Tobias. Yes, sir. Uh, those uh, rails for the south, are they going to mirror something like we did on West Court? They're the exact same design as the one on West Court. I thought they were. Yep. And we did get two of them? We did get two of them. We made sure of it this time. So you only make that mistake once. Yeah. Very cool. When can we do something with the West Court bridge? Those, I brought it up before, those concrete barriers or what's next to the sidewalk. What are we going to do to make that look nice? We've got all that nice ironwork there, and that just looks like crap. About the only thing we talked about you could really do is paint those um, jersey barriers that are along the side there. I mean, that's about all you could do to them. You'd have to continue to repaint them. Sand. If you drive a little uh, faster, you don't notice them. It'll <laughs> salt. <laughs> you know, whether or not you can find a paint that would, uh, uh, you know, uh, propel or repel some of that stuff. I don't know. With sandblasting them? Yeah. You, I mean, you, you can, but you're going to have the same issue. You're not going to sandblast them there, so you have to move them someplace so you don't damage the, the rails you just put on. Yeah. Maybe somebody could look into it, but I think they we talked about it, but die. I don't know that we've come up with it any does. kind of a solution. Somebody there. makes a concrete die. It doesn't last. Well, I mean, it'll probably last longer than paint. Well, yeah. You want decorative uh, jersey barriers? Any, anything to, that way the good people from the west side can see what the east side looks like. Keep it up. I'm really <laughs> All right. I'll put a gate across that bridge. I can outrun you. Any other questions regarding <laughs> the uh, city administrator's monthly report? All right. With that, our next regular scheduled meeting is going to be on May 2nd in these chambers. And again, may or may not have a work session depending upon what's pending. Mr. McLean? I move the meeting be adjourned at 7.48 p.m. Second. Moved by... McLean, seconded by Billsbach, that the uh, meeting be adjourned at 7.48 p.m. Your vote, please. That is approved 8-0. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, gentlemen.